The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, say hello to everybody and uh, just tell you that we're, we're just uh, one or two minutes away from being started. So I'm just going to mute the microphone. We'll be starting really soon. All right, we're uh, we're gonna get started. Um, Courtney, can you verify that you can see my screen? Mm -hmm. You can see a Fravo in HR. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, again, thank you everyone for uh, joining the webinar today. We're gonna uh, it's gonna be a pretty quick webinar. Um, we're gonna um, oops, where's my mouse gone? There it is. Um, start the recording. I've already started the recording. We're going to do a really quick overview, literally three slides, uh, explaining a little bit of uh, Fravo, how Fravo is being used in HR, and then really jump into demoing and showing some examples about uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, Fravo being used in, in these kinds of situations. And then we'll have some time for questions. I have my colleague Courtney here uh, on the webinar with me as well. Um, she will be monitoring questions and asking them. Uh, there is a questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel that you should see. And uh, you can always uh, type a question in there to ask. Uh, in, and uh, in some cases, Courtney might answer the question by typing the response back to you as well. Uh, but hopefully we'll have some time um, at the end for questions as well. So real quick, what do we do? Uh, there are a couple of people here that are new to Frevo, uh, but really it's point and click software to automate your approval workflows. Uh, approval workflows in literally a matter of days. Uh, typically, uh, these, uh, these approval workflows have forms. So think about a form that's filled out by a person one and is really then walked around within the organization to get approvals. Um, to get signatures essentially for approvals. Most, most of the time, customers uh, used to do this uh, either on paper and, and using sneakerware or uh, by emailing Excel or PDF documents around. And with Frevo, they're able to automate these, these forms, digitize these forms, automate the workflow, connect to their backend systems very quickly. Uh, we have over 800 customers at this point. Uh, there are a lot of names here that I'm sure you'll recognize. Um, we have customers of all sizes from very, very large organizations to very, very small organizations and everything in between. Um, from a variety of uh, verticals, we have a lot of universities and schools, uh, healthcare, retail, government, uh, manufacturing, uh, a whole whole uh, wide variety of, a lot of nonprofit organizations as well. Uh, using Frevo for a variety of purposes. Um, here are some examples of what they're using it for. So these are really just a few of uh, the top examples. I'd say the most common things, the two most common things, maybe the three most common things that we see people, uh, customers using Frevo for are employee onboarding, purchase requests, purchase orders, purchase internal purchase request forms, and then also in many cases, SQL or database integration. So those are uh, those are some of the crucial, uh, you know, key features that customers uh, buy 
Travo 4. A lot of customers use it for things like absence records, travel claim, expense reports, see real normal day-to-day uh, processes within your operational processes within your organization for transportation, background check, permission forms. So another example is HR forms where you are, there are a lot of consent forms, very similar to school permission forms really, where all you're uh, trying to do is get your all your employees to sign acknowledging either a policy or a, a, an enrollment form where there's very little uh, information to fill out in a signature. Uh, very common use case for Frevo as well. Um, why do our customers use Frevo? Um, well, the most important thing is that it meets business requirements. So it's not just a, uh, a, a, a product that's used for really simple forms. Um, you can create large, complex forms with Frevo. Customers have created very, very complicated forms um, using, using Frevo with all kinds of dynamic behavior. Uh, Frevo automatically works on all mobile devices. There are many situations, we'll see one today, employee onboarding where you want to generate PDFs like a government W-4 or an I-9, you do that automatically in Frevo. Signatures, electronic signatures, uh, secured electronic signatures is another feature in Frevo that is very popular or very important to customers. Many, many times um, organizations have some sort of LDAP, Active Directory, some mechanism, uh, internal mechanism to authenticate. Frevo integrates with Active Directory. Various SAML providers such as Okta, Google Apps, um, etc. We already mentioned SQL integration, business rules for dynamic forms. We have a visual rule builder, which I'll show you also. You can also integrate with SharePoint and, and other systems uh, such as Box.com, a variety of document management systems. Uh, and other backend systems as well. So at the end of the day, it's capable of really meeting their business requirements. Um, and our customers, most of our customers have also found out that creating native apps and or custom coding is simply not practical. It's extremely expensive, takes very long, and that's if you can find the people uh, with the necessary skills and retain them. With Frevo, it's very easy to do. It just works on mobile devices. It's built for business. You don't have to think about this. And then the ROI on um, creating, uh, automating your Frevo, uh, your workflow uh, with Frevo is very, very rapid. Uh, the last one of our recent PO workflow took literally 45 person hours. So we did this in, in a matter of days, uh, just a little bit over a week. And as you can imagine, the amount of time that was saved um, was tremendous, resulting in a positive ROI under three months in this particular case. So um, that was my little spiel. So we've got uh, a demo and some examples to show you. So the first uh, thing I'm going to show you is, is just sim simply single sign-on. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier is customers often uh, like the fact or require the fact that Frevo can integrate with your existing authentication or identity, identity management system. The most common ones are Active Directory, Google Apps, Okta, etc. So I'm going to now switch to a uh, different browser here, and I'm going to go to uh, actually I'm not to show this, but right, I'm going to get here. I'm going to go to this URL, which is a Frevo uh, uh, a Frevo link, and you'll see that this particular uh, tenant, as we call it in Frevo, I'll explain that in a second, is configured with SAML. So when I try to log into to the Frevo server. Uh, to this particular tenant, it knows, Frevo knows that, oh, this thing is configured with single sign-on uh, and, and it is uh, using Google Apps as a, as, as a provider. So I'm gonna redirect you to the Google login page. So I'm gonna log in here using this account called designer, F underscore designer or designer Frevo. And I'm gonna click sign in and you'll see that after the sign in process is complete, we end up in a, uh, we end up, we're logged into our Frevo account. You're logged in as the user f underscore designer at frevo.com, which is the, the Google uh, identity of this user. And then the second ad shows you which tenant in Frevo you're logged into. So what do I mean by tenant? Uh, Frevo is a multi-tenant application. This happens to be running in our cloud. Um, you can absolutely also run Frevo as an on-premise solution. Both are identical. The software is identical in both cases. Um, and both are multi-tenant. And a tenant simply means that it is your space, your area, where you can separate your forms, users, workflows, applications, everything um, is separated across tenants, although they may use, they will be using the same common infrastructure. Okay, 
Um, so now I, I just wanted to show you how you can log in to Frevo using a uh, using Google Apps as an identity provider. Uh, so a lot of customers do this. A lot of customers also do it using Active Directory. Frevo also integrates with Microsoft's Azure AD. So there are a lot of uh, customers that are now syncing their internal or on-premise Active Directory with uh, Microsoft's Azure AD. And Frevo has a very seamless integration with that as well. Um, another important thing that customers use Frevo for is signature forms. Um, so signatures are um, just getting people to sign off. And this, these examples over here happen to be uh, related to a school district trying to get signatures, uh, permission forms signed by parents. In the HR world, they might be, they might, they're probably not, you know, address change and field trip permission and things of that sort, but there's, but the concept is very similar where I have a policy change within the organization or uh, you need to certify that you took a particular uh, particular training class. Um, and all that's required is essentially go to a, go to the company intranet or uh, wherever to somewhere, on, uh, somewhere online, uh, pull up a form, pull up the necessary form and sign indicating that you have taken that class. So let's take a quick look at some of these. Now, one of the things that Frevo also provides built into the system is what we call spaces. Um, and a space is simply a portal. And just think of it as a portal that's just built into Frevo. Um, the space allows you to um, group together forms and flows, related forms and flows, and provide a, a easy way for users to access these. It takes care of these little uh, you know, menus. Um, also takes care, uh, uh, automatically enforces access control. So it will only show you the forms and flows that you are allowed to access. Um, if there's a form or workflow that's deployed in the system but you don't have permission, you won't even see it in here. And the other big advantage of using a space is that it automatically works on mobile devices also. So if you were to access this space on your mobile device, it will look different. Let me see if I can at least uh, simulate it. I think if I, I think if you do that, you can kind of get a picture. This isn't running on an actual tablet, but you'll see this is exactly the same space portal, but it looks completely different on the tablet. You don't have to actually do any of this. Frevo automatically will will render the correct version depending on the system that you're using. Um, so a signature form that we just talked about here's a, a standard general permission form. So this is about as generic as it gets. It's going to fill in some information here, which is already filled. There's some text really common scenario um, and I simply have to click. So all you got to do is tap this thing um, and I'm just going to sign. Uh, right now I happen to be signing using the trackpad on my computer. But if you have a mobile phone or an iPad, you can um, also sign using your finger on the touchscreen device and often that's much easier. Um, the other um, thing I did want to show you here also is that Frevo also supports any uh, multiple languages. So you can create the same form in uh, different languages. Frevo works in all languages worldwide. And we have customers using Frevo in a wide variety of languages, including right to left languages like Arabic and Hebrew, uh, Spanish, French, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, here's the same form, uh, exact same form in French. Uh, just to be clear, you don't have to redesign the form in different languages. You simply have to provide translations of the strings, and Frego provides a mechanism for that. So the form's identical. You go up here and you simply sign again. Um, and then the other thing um, to note here is that you can actually generate the form in English, even though it was filled out by uh, by the end user in Spanish. So that's kind of an interesting little um, side effect here, also that the data can actually be trans transferred uh, and copied into a form in any language. So a very simple example, HR forms are also pretty similar. Um, as I mentioned, you got a policy, you need people to sign it, go to your task, uh, go to your uh, portal, click on the link over here, look at the form, fill in your information, which might be pre-filled for you depending on whether you're logged in or not, sign, submit, you're done. Um, very simple use case but very common within uh, within customers as well. Um, the next uh, thing we're going to we're going to show you is um, rules, visual uh, dynamic forms. So this is a huge um, 
feature uh, within Frevo. A lot of uh, customers use Frevo for business forms that are extremely dynamic. So but, but by dynamic, uh, there are many, many examples of, of uh, forms being dynamic. Uh, these could be situations where uh, you show or hide controls depending on the depending on values in the form. You might, uh, you might also automatically create forms that uh, calc perform calculations like subtotals and grand totals. We're gonna show you some of that. And you can also create very dynamic forms um, and workflows that only show you parts of the form. So you may only see, uh, you only see those parts of the form that are relevant to the person who's filling out the form and the stage in the workflow that you're in. And we'll see several examples of this as well. Before we go there though, uh, the creating these dynamic forms uh, used to be really hard, but with Frevo, it's really easy because we have this visual rule designer. So let's take a look at uh, creating a couple of uh, couple of these examples in Frevo. So I'm going to go here to the uh, where am I? So I've got a couple of forms here that have been pre-created. Um, so this is a simple example form. If you look at it, it has a billing address and a shipping address. And if you, the shipping address is hidden by default. So for if you, the shipping address section was selected and the visible property is unchecked. And what we want to do is if the user clicks yes in the ship to a different address checkbox, uh, we want this section to be, to become visible and required. So how do you do that in a business rule? Well, I happen to have the rule created here, but we can delete it and create it again. Um, so we're gonna click plus to create a new rule. I'm gonna say show hide shipping address. And we're gonna run the rule builder here. And the rule builder is just a wizard again. It's uh, the first step in the wizard is, well, when do we want this rule to run? Uh, well, that's pretty easy. We want to run the rule when ship to a different address is filled. So that means when somebody has checked um, this particular checkbox. Uh, click next and say, well, what do you want to do when this rule condition is true? Well, it's easy. We want that shipping address section to be visible. And in this case, let's also make the shipping address section as required. And then the next section is what do you want to do when the when the rule is false? And we, we basically want to do the reverse. We want the shipping address section to be hidden. And we also want that shipping address section to be optional. And that's it. So uh, we've created a rule that basically does, uh, has created now a dynamic or conditional section. This section will be visible and required only if the, uh, if the condition is true. So let's try it out. So you see over here, initially, the shipping address section is empty. Um, I check this box, the shipping address section now shows up and it's, it's required, uncheck it, it disappears. So really easy to create these kinds of uh, business rules with dynamic uh, or, or conditional sections. You can start show and hide things depending on uh, data that's filled into the form. I just want to make I want, want to take a look at another rule. This is a subtotal and grand total. Another really common example. So this is a form. It has a table in it: uh, description, quantity, unit price, subtotal, and grand total. And what we want to do is calculate the subtotals. The subtotal is obviously the quantity multiplied by unit price, and then a separate rule that adds the subtotals to create a grand total. Let's take a look at these rules. Uh, it's pretty simple. When do we want this rule to run? Well, we want it to run when the quantity is filled and the unit price is filled. So you need some value in both quantity and unit price. Click next. And what we want to do is set the subtotal to the quantity multiplied by the unit price. Pretty straightforward. Uh, creating this kind of thing is pretty simple in Frevo. You just type in quantity and there's autocomplete. And it's very similar to uh, you know an Excel spreadsheet or something along those lines. Um, and what do we want to do when it's false? We just want to set the subtotal to empty. And that's all there is to it. Uh, you don't have to worry about the fact that there can be multiple rows. There are multiple quantities, multiple unit prices. It's just going to do the right thing automatically for you. If you want, you can click on the rule code here and look at what the what Frevo is generating behind the scenes. And if you really, if, if it becomes necessary, you can also click edit code 
and edit this code. Remember, once you edit the code, you can't go back to the rule builder. Um, the other rule we, we've added here is to calculate the grand total, and this one is really, really simple. All we want to do here is um, there's no condition. We want to do this every time, and all we want to do is set the grand total to sum of all the subtotals, and that's it. There's really nothing. There's no false uh, since there's no condition that's been specified. So very simple, um, very simple to create these kinds of rules. Let's take a quick look at this rule in action. Are you trying to ask me something? Um, uh, yeah, no. there's a question on this. Oh, okay. Signature. Okay, we'll get to it. We'll get to the. We'll get to all the questions um, um, at the end. Um, so really, here we can look at this and say, well, we have got some red widgets, eleven of them at seventeen bucks. You see the subtotal and the grand total have been calculated for you. I want blue blue ones for 16, 73, whatever. The, the numbers are calculated for you. And Frevo is also, um, the rule will also do the right thing automatically for, um, if you delete a row. So I delete the blue widgets row and you'll see that the grand total and subtotal also get automatically got recalculated. So very easy to, to create these kinds of uh, dynamic forms, uh, business rules. Um, in Frevo, it's completely visual, very, very simple and straightforward to do. Okay, so um, having looked at those visual uh, uh, rule, the visual rule builder to create these dynamic forms, another example of uh, very dynamic forms are when these forms are integrated with SQL databases. So customers will use um, Frevo forms and workflows integrated with these databases because you can pre-fill information from the form. So if you know who the logged in user is, which you do in Frevo, you can go look up that person's profile in your database and fill in a whole bunch of information. You can create dynamic pick lists. So we'll see in the example here, the, the list of customers and the list of orders is dynamically uh, populate, populated from the database. You can view specific records, create update records, run stored procedures, do all kinds of stuff here. It's a really sophisticated, integration with the SQL database. Um, and there's a lot of functionality that you can um, you can do perform in Frevo there. Where's my space gone? Here it is. Um, so let's go back to that space and take a look at uh, an example. So this is a, this one is really simple. This is an employee form. Um, uh, this is a, uh, sorry, not employee form. It's a master detail form, a really common example. Uh, the list of employees populates from the, from the database. Uh, you select an employee and you'll see that the employee details populate automatically down below. So it's very easy to do. Uh, this is a common use case in, in uh, where I've got the list of customers, employees, orders, partners, whatever you might, students, whatever you might, what, whatever you have, uh, populating into a uh, pick list and the, the, the sections, detail section below populates depending on your selection. The nice thing here in Frevo is that the the entire uh, process of populating a detail section is code free. You don't have to write any code to do that. It's just a, a process that you have to follow within the uh, within Frevo. Uh, I did want to point you to uh, some information on that front. Uh, and this is if you go to our documentation and you click on tutorials here, resources, tutorials, there's a database connector tutorial. You can always search for it as well. Um, and this tutorial gives you a really, really uh, detailed look at how you how Frevo integrates with the database. So if you're really interested, uh, certainly recommend you take a look at this tutorial as well. Let's take a look at a slightly more complex form. This one is order information. So this one has multiple things. It does have the, this first list, pick list, um, was populated from the database. It's hard for you to tell right now. But I select uh, a customer, you'll see that the orders pick list populates with a list of orders for that customer. Select a different customer, you get a different set of orders. You see it's a much larger set here. I select an order and the, the, below, the table below populates with details, line items for that order. Select a different order and it, uh, it will update dynamically. Once again, the important, uh, important thing here is, um, first off, that these dynamic pick lists are very easy to do with the database, but down below this complex uh, table, where, where the number of uh, rows is unknown up front, you can have uh, multiple types of uh, data being returned, uh, strings, money fields, quantities, et cetera, et cetera. 
all that stuff is done automatically by Fedora. You really don't need to know or write any code. All, the only thing that you really need to know um, in order to use Frevo with the database connector is SQL. So you will need to write queries or stored procedures if you prefer um, that, that uh, you know, uh, perform the appropriate queries against your backend database. So you need to know you need to know SQL and or stored procedures, and then you can very easily create these kinds of dynamic forms with practically no coding or almost no effort. It's really easy to do. Uh, again, a super popular item, there's gotta be, uh, over 200 customers that are using Frevo with the database connector on a routine basis. So moving on from that, um, the next thing I wanted to um, wanted to show is employee onboarding, uh, particularly when it comes to this PDF generation. So I mentioned this is a very very common um, use case. We got a lot of customers. I'm sure Courtney's Courtney here is familiar with quite a few of them um, using Frevo for employee onboarding. Why do they do, why is this popular? Well, you can easily generate these government PDFs, number one. You don't have to, you, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the form here. It doesn't look anything like this. It doesn't have to look like this. Business rules automatically take care of the confusing aspects, the dynamic aspects of these kinds of tax forms. Um, you eliminate duplicate data entry. For any of you who've been through an employee onboarding process, you know it, it can get very tedious. You have many forms that you're filling out. Uh, one of our recent customers that had gotten all the way up to 40 forms. Seems like a lot to me, but imagine filling out 40 forms. Probably every single one of them asks for your first name, last name, and uh, maybe social security number, or the same information being typed over and over again. You're signing a, a lot of forms over and over again. With Frevo, it's all much, much simpler and cleaner to do. So let's take a quick look at that. So this is employee onboarding, this is a flow. Um, so this is a what we in Frevo call a screen flow. So even though it has all these steps, one, two, three, four, five, six steps, um, all the steps in this case are performed by one person. So it's really, really almost like, uh, you know, taking a large form and breaking it up into multiple steps for ease of use. Um, the next workflow, the last thing we'll look at here is another workflow, which actually routes between different users. So employee onboarding, this is a screen flow here. Um, just to make it easier to demo, we've already filled out a bunch of stuff. Today's date was automatically populated. It is the right date. Um, you enter the first name, last name, you enter sort of usual information in here. Let's make sure it's like Connecticut. Um, and the date of birth, I don't know, seven, 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 eight, something like that. There is a date picker obviously available in Frevo as well. You can also um, type in the date in a wide variety of formats and Frevo will automatically do the right thing. Many of these fields have automatic validation. So for example, this is an email address. If I type something like, which is obviously not an email address, um, Frevo will automatically validate it and complain, say, hey, this is not a valid email address. Same thing for social security number. You can type uh, something and say, well, that's not really a valid social security number. Uh, many of these controls have help. Um, you can enter help text the help test can can be very rich. It can contain links to external um, you know sources of information. It can be formatted. Um, it will just work correctly on mobile devices as well. You can also see these these uh, the controls also have these little decorators, uh, and this is really just eye candy. Uh, they, they look nice, and people have people like to fill out forms that look nice. It's much more likely to be filled out. Uh, there's an upload control here. I can click add over here, click browse, and go find myself a, a file and upload it. Um, but in this case, uh, if we were running this on a mobile device, say a phone or a or a or an iPad with a camera, in this uh, this uh, upload control would give you the option of taking a photograph and uploading it. So you could literally take a picture of yourself and upload it as your profile picture in here. There's also a signature control here, so I'm going to sign, click sign, and I'm going to sign once. There's a signature. Um, click continue, and you'll see we'll now uh, come to essentially the equivalent of that PDF W4. Um, you know, it looks a little bit like the W4, but a heck of a lot nicer. We're going to type in some values here. You'll see that the total number of allowances is being automatically computed. Pretty straightforward. 
click continue. The next step is the uh, Connecticut W4. I'm not sure why the default here is NJ. Um, you know, we fill this out. Uh, there's that withholding codes chart you can put in here. Um, nothing complicated in here. The actual CTW4 is much longer, has a lot of additional information. We'll be looking at the CTW4 that's been generated. So for example, it has first name, last name, address, etc. We don't need to show that here because we already collected that information on that first employee information screen and we can copy it into um, all of these forms. I'm going to click continue here. Uh, we get to an I-9. This is an employment eligibility form. This is a dynamic form. If you looked at the IRS form, it says, well, if you choose this option, then you got to fill in um, fill in this particular section. In Frevo's case, if you choose that option, the section will appear. If you choose a different option, the section disappears. There's no, no need to provide instructions. It's automatically obvious based on the uh, dynamic nature of the form. Click continue. And we come to a summary section, and this is just giving you a automatically generated summary of everything that you filled out. You can click on any details and go back to that particular form and edit it. You can also print this summary out. I'm going to click continue here, and um, we come to a confirmation page. And you click on the W-4 here, you'll see how uh, the W-4 has been generated. Uh, it has the necessary, uh, whatever you filled in from your withholding, first name, last name, everything's been copied, even your signature was copied into this W-4. Look at the completed Connecticut state form. And once again, you'll see how the, the whole uh, form has been filled out. We didn't have to sign more than once. We didn't have to enter the date. We didn't have to do, we didn't have to enter any information more than once. All of it is copied into the necessary onboarding forms so that they're properly generated. These are valid forms that can be now submitted to the IRS, the, the appropriate uh, federal or state department. So that's an example of an employee onboarding workflow. Uh, again, as I mentioned, a really common one. A lot of customers are using this, uh, using Frevo for this particular workflow. Um, it can be extended significantly. Uh, so there are examples of customers that will use this workflow. And then when you click continue, you send that send to HR button. It can go to the HR department. Sometimes in some cases, it integrate, integrates with backend systems and enters that information in. Then can route to the IT department so you can provision a laptop, access to network drives, users, users and passwords and things of that nature. So again, a really common use case um, for Frevo. So that was uh, an employee onboarding with this kind of complex PDF generation. Oh, another uh, important note here is that that PDF generation is very easy to do. It's, I don't have time to show it to you in the webinar. Um, I'll make sure we have a few minutes for questions, but the, um, the actual PDF generation simply involves mapping, dragging and dropping to map fields from your workflow into, uh, into the PDF document. Um, again, it's, uh, you can go to our documentation and search for PDF generation and it'll, it'll, uh, it's very easy to, to understand how to do it. And then finally, approval workflows. This is a, another super common use case where, I think I already mentioned this, where I fill out the form, it routes to my manager for approval, then maybe conditionally, depending on whatever, the amount is greater than $10,000, it needs to route to a VP for approval. Um, Revo workflows can all route to either users or roles. The users and roles can also be determined dynamically. You can do conditional routing, as I mentioned. You can do escalations. So if uh, the VP doesn't uh, respond within 48 hours, send a reminder email. If it does, there's no response for another 48 hours, escalate to someone else. You can also reject workflows so they can go backwards. If my manager doesn't like what, what I filled in, he or she can send it back to me. You can save load large forms so they can come back to them later. Um, and a lot of features. Uh, it's a, it's a, definitely a powerful uh, system for these routine approval workflows. Let's take a quick look at one of them, travel authorization. This is again a really common example. So I wanna travel somewhere, I'm gonna put in my email address here. Uh, the employee information was automatically filled in from my login. Uh, I'm logged in as, as this user, so the employee information was filled in. Trip information on the next step, uh, there's there's some validation in here. So for example, the departure date can't be in the past because you're getting authorization. So let's say I'm going on the 30th of March, the return date can't be before the departure date. So this is basic validation so people don't make errors. 
the destination city, uh, there's also some dynamic behavior here. If I select United States, I got to select a state. If I chose in a different country, the state would be would be uh, would not be there. Um, another thing that Frevo does, which I haven't shown so far, is that it automatically enforces validation. So you you have to if, if something's required, you got to fill it in. So you see how this one is yellow and this thing is red in here. This side, this section button. If I just click, go to the next step, Frevo is gonna, gonna gonna stop me from making a mistake there, and it's gonna tell me, yeah, look at the it's a highlight these sections here, saying these yellow sections must be filled in. You can also put a message here uh, anywhere, in fact, on the form, if you'd like, or multiple messages in the form, um, so that you can you know, put an explicit message on the screen that says, hey, there's some missing information, fill it out before you can continue. So let's say we're going for university business, click sign this section. Now this is a, uh, a secure digital signature. So now this sign this section functionality is based on my uh, login user ID as well as all the data in the form. You see, as soon as I click sign this section, every field here was grayed out. I can't change anything in here. Uh, and a, a real PKI digital signature that's based on the data, the user ID, and the date and time has been generated behind the scenes. So that's for uh, trip information. I'm gonna click on estimated expenses next. You'll also see how as we go, uh, go through the workflow, the employee and trip information sections are now automatically collapsed. Um, so the form is automatically adjusting depending on which step we're in. The expense category, uh, expense area here has a number of categories. So let's say I'm going to airfare. When I select airfare, the description and cost fields become required. Let's say it costs two thousand dollars. If I select mileage, you'll see that the miles uh, field is populated, um, and the cost is automatically calculated based on the IRS mileage rate. The estimated total is also being automatically calculated. Uh, let's say we've got to spend five hundred dollars on food, um, and there's my estimated total. I'm going to click this thing to sign it, um, and now when I click send for approval, it's now going to actually route to the department head. Now the department head happens to be a user called Sue. So now I'm going to log in. I got to go to a different browser. Um, I'm already logged in here as that user Sue, um, and Frevo also has a built-in task list. Um, this is just built in your system. It's included in the space. Uh, usually it's automatically generated in the space. When I click that task list um, uh, menu item here, you'll see that my task list now shows this pending travel approval for, um, for this user, Neris. Um, I can click the play button here and the task shows up. Once again, you can see now this department head approval section is visible. If you recall on any prior, uh, on the prior, uh, steps in the workflow when I was filling it out as the employee, the department head approval section was not even visible. Um, there's a little message control that's dynamically, uh, the message here is dynamically generated, just giving me a quick synopsis of what the heck uh, this travel authorization is for. And of course, I can always expand these sections and look at it in, in detail. Once again, I approve this travel, I'm gonna click continue, and now routes back to the original user. Go to that person's task list. You'll see this task here. If I choose not to take the trip for some reason, I can abort this task. Um, but I can also click the play button and say, okay, now I've come back from my trip. What was my actual cost? Let's say it was $1,980. Uh, I actually drove 140 miles, so it's a little bit more. And food was more expensive than I thought. Uh, so you'll see that the actual total is greater than the estimated total. So Frevo says, oh, well, you got to get approval yet again. If we, uh, if it was the other way around, it would say, okay, your actual is lower than your pre-approved estimated total. You're ready to go. You don't need to get additional approval. So I'm gonna sign for the, um, for the actual expenses, click submit expenses. It's gonna go back to this department head for approval. And um, it's really only a step here saying, look, that, that looks good, I'm gonna approve it. Sign this section, click finish, and the workflow is now complete. And Frevo will send um, an email with the travel authorization PDF. Here's the travel authorization uh, PDF that was sent, uh, confirmation that was or acknowledgement that was sent by email to the, to the user. You can configure, you can actually um, format this PDF in a variety of ways. We put in some page breaks in here, but you can also put margins, headers, footers, 
etc. in this PDF uh, in this PDF document. Okay, uh, so that so that was um, a quick look at some of the app, some of the ways in which Frevo is used in the HR domain uh, for simple things like collecting signatures for for permissions and uh, policy changes, things of that nature. Uh, of course, you we showed you how you can sign on um, using your existing authentication framework. You can easily create dynamic forms using a visual rule builder, connect to your database and other systems to create highly dynamic forms. You can do PDF generation, eliminate duplicate data entry for a really common HR onboarding type of application, and also digitize your approval workflow so that the system will route these approvals to the right user at the right time, collect signatures, remind them, et cetera, et cetera, and, and save your employees time uh, so they don't, have to, they don't have to spend their time tracking these workflows, chasing down signatures, uh, trying to figure out where the workflow is and why, why, uh, why any signatures are delayed. Um, there are a number of resources available real quick. Uh, our website, there's an HR, Solutions HR. Uh, click on Customers to look at a variety of case studies. You can click on Get Help Examples. Uh, try some of these examples, the employee onboarding workflow I just showed you. You can just click here to try it yourself. And then we also have a number of videos, uh, employee onboarding, purchase order, travel authorization, a variety of other uh, uh, demos in there as well. Okay, um, so thank you very much for attending. That's all I had in my presentation. Maybe went a few minutes over. Hopefully we have a little bit of, we, have, we still have some time for questions. Hopefully there are some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yep, there was a question about the legality of the digital signatures. Okay. And, um, yes. So I think that's in our um, documentation here. Um, so yeah, the the electronic signatures are uh, the, yeah. There's a there's a there's a documentation. Uh, if you go to our documentation, I guess search for legally binding electronic transactions, and you'll find. Uh, clear documentation um, indicating why these digital signatures um, in Frevo are satisfy the requirements uh, for, for being legal digital signatures. Okay, so short answer, yes. Uh, long answer, uh, there's detail in this document. Uh, and you may have already kind of covered this a little bit, but are there any workflows that come with Frevo kind of out of the box ready to use? Sure. So the question was, are there any workflows that come with Frevo out of the box, ready to use? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, when you sign in to your cloud account here, for example, you'll see a number of templates uh, available here, purchase order, travel authorization, etc., etc. Click on this more template apps and you'll see there are a few more that we've got uh, deployed here. Uh, and you can simply uh, hover over any one of them, click install like purchase order and will install the application for you and it'll also actually walk you through a little guided tour um, showing you what exactly um, each of the things on the screen is how to if you try to uh, you know try to run this workflow for example again a little guided tour will pop up saying hey here's what we you know check out how this workflow actually works explaining how these things work so yes the short answer is again yes absolutely uh, in reality in practice what we have found is um, almost every single one of our customers does modify these workflows, uh, these, these template workflows to suit their needs or, or ha has us modify them. Obviously, we offer client services to do this as well. Um, but that's one of the strengths, one of the nice things about Frevo is you don't have to use, a, you don't have to adjust your business process to fit the software. You adjust the software to fit your business process and it's very easy to do. Um, another question was, is it possible to do parallel routing in flows or only serial? Right. The different design paradigms. Yeah. So we do, today, today in, in um, Frevo's workflow, we don't support fork join type of parallel routing. Uh, it's one of the items on our roadmap. And it's actually been there for two or three years. Uh, it seems like something else always bubbles to the top. However, in the all, in the vast majority of cases, um, there is a very uh, suitable workaround in the sense that you can take a workflow and simultaneously route it to multiple people. Um, so it could route to me, to Courtney, and to, to Jack, let's say. Um, the way Frevo works is if I 
grab that workflow and I'm in the act of actually approving or using that specific instance of the workflow, then for the duration of time that I'm actually using it, the other two uh, participants will be locked out. Um, what I can do is I can say, I can look at the workflow, I can sign, approve, put my comments, whatever I want, click a button, and it'll go back into the uh, inbox for Courtney and Jack, and they can grab it at that time. So the limitation that we have right now is that while you can send it to multiple people, multiple people cannot work on it simultaneously. The system will take care of the details for you, as in if person one uh, uh, grabs it, it's going to automatically lock out persons two and three. Okay. Yep. You answered everything else? Everything else is pretty good. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Perfect. Exactly 45 minutes as we had uh, promised. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. We appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully, you found it useful. If you have any questions, you can go to our website, www.fravo.com, or uh, contact us either at this phone number or at info at uh, Thanks again for attending. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.